All right, perfect. Uh, welcome to our September 1st, 2022 uh, Maricopa County Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order and uh, we'll take a roll call. Chairman Lindblom. Here. Vice Chair Slasher. Here. Commissioner Arnett. Here. Commissioner Swart. I've lost all visual, but I still have the ability to hear you and hopefully you can hear me, but I lost the entire screen and I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Lawrence. Here. Commissioner McGee. Here. Commissioner Mitchell. Here. Commissioner Hernandez. Here. Commissioner Montoya. Commissioner Dan Zeisen. Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. All right, great. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll read some announcements about this meeting and how we'll conduct it. This meeting has been noticed in accordance with open meeting laws, according to Arizona revised statute section 38-431. Agendas are available within 24 hours of each meeting in the Maricopa County Planning and Development Office and are also available on the Planning and Development website one week prior to hearing at www.maricopa.gov backslash planning. The staff reports prepared for each agenda item shall become a part of the permanent record for each case. With respect to this hearing process, cases will be considered in the order they appear on the agenda unless otherwise agreed to by the commission. And for each case, the applicant will give will be given a set amount of time to present. Anyone wishing to speak on a particular case shall fill out a speaker's card for in-person attendance or raise your hand within the GoToWebinar. The amount of time allowed for speaking shall be at the discretion of the commission chair. Staff will provide the chairman with the names of persons who have registered and noted desire to comment and those registered participants who have raised their hand. The chairman will call on each name participant one at a time. The chairman will conduct the hybrid in-person and virtual public hearing according to the bylaws and accordance and according to the rules established by the chairman regarding public comment. Votes will be done by roll call vote only and the chairman will ver verbally identify the specific members responsible for all motions and seconds. So getting that business out of the way, we'll go ahead and Move to our next item, the minutes for July 21st, 2022 and August 4th, 2022. Are there any comments from the commission on these minutes? If none, those minutes are approved. And um, we have a sta any staff announcements on the agenda? Uh, no, sir, but if you like, we have, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We do. Uh, on the consent agenda, we have items three, four, and five for Sunrise Ranch to be pulled for uh, regular discussion. Okay, we'll go ahead and pull items three, four, and five from the consent agenda and uh, move those to the regular agenda. Uh, we can move into um, the rest of the continuance agenda, which is items number one. Z2021-137 and items number two, Z2022-075. Um, if staff would like to present on that. Mr. Chairman, uh, I failed to make one other announcement. All right, let's back up. On the phone today, we have a new planning and zoning commissioner, TJ Mitchell, representing District 3. Awesome. Um, he uh, wanted to be here in person, but uh, circumstances arose. So. Well, we're happy to. We do have uh, nine uh, commissioners present. That's that's a, that's a great attendance, and uh, welcome, Commissioner Mitchell, for your first planning and zoning meeting. We're glad to have you join us. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be on on board. And and uh, like Darren said, I I wish I could be there in person, but I have a bit of a flu, so hope to be in person for the next meeting. Well, enjoy the virtual option while it lasts. So appreciate that. All right. Uh, Chairman, we have two items uh, to be continued uh, at the applicant's request, both to September 22nd, 2022. Therefore, no actions required by this board. Those items are in District 5, Z2021-137, Envirotech Group, 
a zone change to Industrial 2 IUPD for a 12-acre site at southwest corner of Campbell and 355th Avenue. And in District 2, Z2022-075, known as uh, NWC-202 and Apache billboard. And this is a zone change to C3 CUPD to accommodate a digital billboard face on a half-acre site located at the northwest corner of Apache and 202 Freeway. Um, again, both of these requests are by the applicant to, to be heard on September 22nd, 2022. Therefore, no actions required. They will automatically be on that agenda. Thank you. Thank you for correcting. That was the continuance agenda. I said, I think consent, but uh, so no actions required. Those two items, number one and two on the agenda will be continued to September 22nd, 2022. And now we will move into our consent agenda. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners, there's a single item on consent. That is Z2021-075 known as Bennett Auto in District 1. This is a special use permit for a home-based cottage industry in the Rural 43 Zoning District on a site just under one acre at the northwest corner of Empire Boulevard and 203rd Way in the Queen Creek area. Uh, there's no known opposition to the special use permit, although the case is the result of a zoning violation due to citizen complaint. Uh, staff has received numerous calls of support to the actual special use permit. The recommendation in paragraph 20 is for approval subject to conditions A through I. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. Gerard at this time by, by the commission? Any discussion that would like to occur? And if not, I'll entertain a motion. As Commissioner Hernandez, I'll um, make a motion to approve a consent agenda item Z 2021-075 as presented by staff. Thank you. We have a, a motion to approve by Commissioner Hernandez. Do we have a second? Second. Um, and who was that? Just for clarity. It's Commissioner Lawrence. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Lawrence. So we have a, a motion by Commissioner Hernandez and a second by Commissioner Lawrence. Let's go ahead and take a roll call vote. Commissioner Lawrence. Yes. Commissioner McGee. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Commissioner Schwartz. Yes. Commissioner Arnett. Yes. Commissioner uh, Hernandez. Yes. Commissioner Van Zysen. Yes. Vice Chair Slasher. Yes. Chairman Limblom. Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of nine to zero. Perfect. Thank you. We have a nine, nine to zero vote, so we will approve that and move forward to our regular agenda items number three, four, and five. If uh, staff would like to present, is that you, Mr. Cannon? Thank you, Chairman Lindblom and members of the board. Cases CPA 2021-012, Z2021-074, and S2021-020 are for a general comprehensive plan amendment, zone change with overlay and preliminary plat for Sunrise Ranch at South Mountain, a Bella Floor residential development with 101 single family for sale lots. Next slide, please. The total site is approximately uh, 58.04 gross acres and 57.42 net acres and is generally located at the southeast corner of 35th Avenue and Olney Avenue in the Levine area. Next slide. The site is current, uh, located currently in the Rural 43 Zoning District uh, and is in Supervisor District 5. For the comprehensive plan amendment, the applicant is requesting to change the land use designation in the Levine area plan from open space and rural to large lot residential. So the rural uh, designation is zero to one dwelling units per acre. The large lot residential would be uh, one to two dwelling units per acre. Uh, the proposed net density of the site is 1.74 dwelling units per acre. Next slide. Um, for the companion zone change case, the request is for a zone change from Rural 43 to R118 RUPD. The applicant is requesting to vary the standards for lot area, setbacks, lot width, and lot coverage. Next slide. And as noted, uh, the plat request is for 101 lots. There are approximately 26.6 acres 
or approximately 46% of the site is uh, reserved for open space. These cases uh, were moved to the regular agenda because staff began receiving opposition after the staff report was published. And uh, the commission has received a handout including uh, those opposition letters. Currently, there are 39 individuals opposed. In total, the staff received a couple of late letters that were unable to be uh, transferred to the commission in time. And those will go with uh, a report to the board when that occurs. As noted, the uh, opposition letters are focused on the density proposed for the site, and some of the letters are requesting that the applicant uh, remove some lots from the proposal. The uh, applicant held a neighborhood meeting earlier this year that was attended uh, by 35 participants. And as a result of the feedback at the meeting and through public participation, the applicant, according to their narrative, uh, revised the design to pattern landscaping in accordance with similar communities, uh, include uh, view fencing along the canal, provide buffers to the site, um, provide rural uh, Levine wall themes in entry monuments, uh, committing to dark sky requirements of Maricopa County, including shielded downward directed lighting. They also uh, added a condition that requires notes on the plat uh, that discloses to future tenants that they are in proximity to an active uh, agricultural use area and uh, potential for non-domestic animal keeping from other property owners. They also added a condition requiring the plat to note the proximity of an active AD aviation use at a uh, hangar Hacienda as a private uh, hangar subdivision. Staff received no comments on the proposal from the city of Phoenix. Uh, the applicant's narrative did note that the applicant spoke with the city of Phoenix regarding a potential annexation of the site and uh, utilities following the determination of uh, the CPA's own change in preliminary plat. Arizona Game and Fish also provided comments related to wildlife protection uh, that are standard relating to construction practices that the applicant will need to address uh, prior to any construction permit incurring. Ultimately, staff is supportive of the comprehensive plan amendment, the zone change and the preliminary plat for the following reasons. For the CPA, the applicant has demonstrated that the request represents an overall improvement to the comprehensive plan in that there are several benefits, including additional future revenue and the potential for the creation of 290 full-time jobs based upon projections from the National Impact of Home Building and Remodeling Report. Surrounding developments adjacent to the proposed developments, such as Carver Canyon and Whispering Hills, located within the city of Phoenix, have some similar densities. Surrounding communities also have similar zoning as well. And this suggests, along with the availability of urban services and utilities, that the CPA and zone change requests are appropriate. Additionally, the proposal as a whole is respectful of the original Levine area plan, open space land use designation, because it preserves a great deal of open space in the hillside portion of the site uh, through the platting process. Additionally, the applicant's narrative and documents associated with the plat suggest that the community will maintain a relatively rural character in keeping with the original world designation while allowing for some additional density. Uh, there are some quality recreational amenities, including an outdoor lounge area, uh, a tot lot park uh, with fruit trees and the preservation of most of the hill area on the site. And lastly, while the city has not commented, uh, the applicant has agreed to a staff condition to be applied to the zone change in a preliminary plat requiring either a utility services agreement or pre-annexation agreement with the city of Phoenix uh, prior to final plat approval. And uh, at this time, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Are there any questions by commission for Mr. Cannon at this time? All right, hearing none, we'll uh, go ahead and um, if the applicants here would like to present, we can have them come and present this case to us. Let's go ahead and state your name and address and I'd love to hear your presentation. Mr. Chairman, members of the board is uh, just checking the microphone working. Everyone can hear me virtually, I hope so. If I need to speak louder, I can. Uh, Reese Anderson is my name and I'm with the law firm of Pew and Lake. My address for your record is 1744 South Val Vista, number 217 in Mesa. I did bring a jacket with me, but walking over, it was still warm outside. And so <laughs> forgive me for not having a, a jacket on just yet, even though it is September. And yes, I, anytime I can match my friend Wayne Peck and wear a jacket and a tie, I want to pay homage to him. 
Uh, members of the, of the commission, <clears throat> staff has done an excellent job of giving you the basic parameters of this uh, project. And we think it's a well-designed, well thought out with a lot of citizen input on it. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to reach agreement on density. And I think that seems to be the sticking point. If you looked at the opposition letters that came in, they all seem to focus on density and lot sizes. And I know um, there's a couple citizens here that will speak to that. So it might be best to reserve some of our time uh, to come back and so we can focus on the right issues. Um, I do have a short presentation. I will run through some of the slides very quickly um, and then I can answer some questions. And then who, who's, you're helping me, you're my co-pilot today. Thank you very much. So if you could start then, if, yeah, go to the next slide again. <clears throat> not spend a lot of time here. We're about 58 acres right here on 35th Avenue, which if you know, is undergoing a major improvement right now is with the county uh, transportation department where they are flattening and straightening out the curve that went over Carver Mountain. And what's interesting about that, I think, is that before this developer, Belfort Communities, uh, who we represent, even closed on this property, partnered with McDod to dynamite that mountain even to a greater extent for the, allow for future road widening because we will have to do additional traffic improvements and instead of blowing up the mountain twice we've, we've done it before and, and you may say to me hey Reese that's all money but I would just ask take it as a sign of good faith of the commitment of the developer to the community to be the least intrusive best neighbor they can so that we're not having to shut the road down unnecessarily for additional dynamiting later. That was done at great expense, but just take that, please, as a sign of good faith. You go to the next slide, please. The next slide here is really just kind of showing where some of those slope lines are, that yellow line showing where some of the mountain, and that becomes important when we start talking about density comparisons in a second. Next slide, please. So that's our request, general comprehensive or a comprehensive plan amendment, rezoning and a preliminary plat, please, next. Adam did a great job covering these, so we won't go very fast. When we met early on with the Levine citizens who were responsible, and we've met twice with that group. Um, the request that came to us was keep your density under two. We've done that. In fact, we, we are 1.74. So we think we've exceeded what that request was. They want us to stay with R118 zoning, and that was important because of what's happening in the area overall. So even though the lot sizes might say, well, you should be you know, a little bit lower, we've exercised the R118 RUPD to make sure that we're meeting those, uh, their expectations and their standards and working closely with staff, we've achieved that. Um, we coordinated the landscaping as Adam uh, spoke to, we, we additional, uh, we pulled, I mean, we've done a lot of things here. So when allegations are made that we haven't worked with the community, uh, as Adam pointed out, we pulled stuff back from 35th Avenue, we've added additional landscaping, the walls and theming are the agrarian. There's walking paths that connect to the canal. There's internal walking paths and even uh, fruit trees by our internal amenity, uh, which is a really nice area to have. Next slide, please. So here's the site plan. As you can see, the darker colored lots on the south are larger in size. The yellow ones um, are the smaller. Although to me, when you look at what is the average lot size, and in your staff report, you can see there when you say, okay, what is my average lot size compared to my overall acreage? And we're at 22,000 and change per uh, lot is what that works out to be. So it's a unique one where we find ourselves in a position arguing that a density of 1.74 is small lots and we're cramming them in. I mean, I've never, that's been an interesting one that we uh, rarely come across or you're, you're saying, hey, the, this is not compatible. Uh, next slide, please. You're just zooming in a little bit there. Uh, again, drawing your attention to the right side where there's a break in the brown lots, that's a trail going south. Uh, two entrances coming in off of 35th Avenue. And again, pulled uh, quite a ways back. Go to the next slide, please. There, here's, again, working with the LCRD and, and some of the citizens around. We've in, uh, improved our theme walls, et cetera. And so you can see that the, um, again, 35th Avenue will be on your south. And those uh, light blue color walls are those primary theme walls. We'll show you a picture of that in a second. But those are set back quite a ways from the 35th Avenue. 
View fencing is, is, in, is there. That's what you see in the yellow. Next slide. Here's pictures of some of these walls. Again, I think our design team's done an excellent job here. Next slide. Just, just to, um, this is an interesting one too, because as we started the original process, and you might say, hey, uh, Reese, what would a typical subdivision look like here? Well, we'd have lots pushed to the perimeter. We'd have lots back to back. And if you look at this site plan, there's not a single lot that touches our perimeter. And that was intentional after working with the citizens. But look at some of those buffers uh, there on 35th Avenue, 68, 174. To our south side, where there's actually a canal that's, that we measured at 60 feet in width. I mean, you're getting some significant distances between that and homes to the south. To our east, again, we've got 60 and 66 feet at the narrowest uh, part. And with the exception of two lots here, I can't find any other lot that backs up to another lot. That's a very unique design. So I, I'm hopeful that even from our good folks that are here, who I respect, that they'll at least agree with us that this is a well-designed, well-thought-out plan. Next slide. So concerns that we've had uh, heard from our January meeting were density and lot sizes. And I'm happy to share thoughts on that also. But again, density is 1.74. That's compatible with what's going on around us in the general area, et cetera. And we'll share some more thoughts on that. Next slide, please. So you'll see a slide a little bit later from uh, one of our neighbors that's here. That slide really focuses on what's happening to the south and doesn't give you a full picture. So I wanted to give you something a little bit more. There in red is us. And we're at 1.74 and you say, well, Reese, what's, what's the 2.15 adjusted? And the reason that's important here is because these adjusted densities really take into calculation how much area you're preserving for mountain slopes, not open space, but mountain slopes, because part of this property has some mountain slope on it. So when I adjust it, I get to 2.15. But look at Whispering Hills right across the street. When, when, and, and, and these numbers come right from their plat. You're at 1.46, but 1.99 when you take out their hillside protected areas. Carver Canyon, which just had a neighborhood meeting and is processing through the system now in the city of Phoenix. And based on our attendance at that meeting, a lot of folks were in support of it. They've got a density proposed of 1.16, which sounds really low until you adjust it for all of the hillside protection that they're required to do. And when you get that number, you're at 3.4. And then just go north of us a little bit, and you can see some of those densities, including the Live Levine at 17 dwelling units to the acre. So there's a lot more happening around the area. So when, when we as a society talk about inclusiveness and diversity, et cetera, to me, those principles apply everywhere, including housing. The question in my mind becomes, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, can I do that without disrupting anyone else? Am I dumping traffic unnecessarily into their neighborhood? Am I backing up too many homes? Am I causing something that really upsets the existing land patterns or their way of life? And the answer to every one of those check marks here is no. This is a well thought out, well planned, well designed with citizen input uh, project. So that's probably what I really wanted to share with you at this point. Let me pause there and answer questions that the commission may have. But I, I really think that, and again, your staff here has looked at this carefully. This is a really well done project. Thank you. Are there any um, questions by the commission for Mr. Anderson at this time? Okay, um, we'll go ahead and reserve some time for you as you requested uh, to address any um, concerns as they come. All right, uh, we will go ahead and move into um, some of the other, um, those that have come to talk in opposition or support. We'll go ahead and start with those that are, let me go in person first. I think that's what we do. Let's do that. Um, I will go ahead and ask, um, is it Sid Manning? All right. Um, there's uh, many in the emails and then uh, those that have requested to, to give their time to you. 
and, and we appreciate that by the community at, when they can do that. So we will uh, give you give you some uh, a good amount of time here to present. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chairman Lindholm. And I appreciate you being willing to share the visuals from the community as well. So, um, good morning, Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Sid Manning. I live at 3220 West Seton Drive. I'm a 22 plus year Levine resident and I can see this property from my home. Um, so I will be affected by what is developed here. I've also been active in the community with development projects, <clears throat> pardon me, over the last, oh my gosh, almost 20 years. Um, I do support compatible and responsible development and growth, but this project is incompatible with the area. Density has been and is the number one issue. Um, Mr. Anderson liked to focus on all of the icing and the decorations on the cake, but the applicant has refused to address the cake itself. Um, They've known density has been the issue. They've ignored it and ignored the community input since the January 6th meeting, which is the only neighborhood meeting that they've had. If you go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> the applicant inaccurately states that the city is trending away from zero to one densities in this area. This map, and then when we go to the next slide, you'll see that that's not true. You know, the applicant is very narrowly focused on comparing their project to only two other developments. That's Carver Canyon and Whispering Hills. Let me talk about Whispering Hills first. That's at a much lower density of 1.1 DUA and is just north of the Carver Foothills, which provide a significant physical buffer from the higher densities from Dobbins north to baseline. Carver Canyon, let's talk about that number two. That is the very, very small orange spot that you see on the corner of the Carver Foothills in that visual. It's a sore thumb. It's a 20 acre parcel. And I've been engaged in every iteration. There's been at least seven or eight iterations of that case since 2007. And at that time in 07, it was a former city councilman that ignored the huge outpouring of opposition from the community and pushed through that high density case. The city had an obligation, they still have an obligation to revert the zoning per ordinance G5020. They have failed to do so since 2011. Myself and many, many other citizens of that area and the broader community have worked tirelessly for years to right that wrong. There may be, there may be a current proposal to reduce the GPA and zoning density to something that is compatible with that site that is barely moving through the process. Unfortunately, the applicant's comparison to these two cases is very disingenuous and it's unrealistic. We all know, I feel a bit insulted as, a, as an educated citizen on planning and zoning matters that they continue to reiterate to me and to you in the city about adjusted density. The calculation for density is gross acres and number of lots. If you go to the next slide, please. You know, the applicant completely ignores comparing their plan to the vast number of acre plus lots that you can see here, right? That bordered their south to the north, to the east, and to the south. I'm to the south. The SRP canal is not a buffer, okay? Um, they also fail to compare their inferior plan to the southeast corner of Carver, Seton, and 35th Avenue, which is at RE35 zoning in the city, and just barely over one DUA. That is a very, very compatible, very large lot, mostly one acre homes that really match the neighborhood. That developer chose to work with me, my neighbors and the broader community back when that was approved and platted. And we went arm in arm to approve it because it is compatible, responsible land use, and it mirrors the area. As you can see, the suburban plan does not, as the applicant claims in their narrative, seamlessly fit into the existing fabric of the area. It's just not true. Their plan has 76% small suburban lots. It is very pretty. Cut it in half, as I said to Mr. Anderson yet this morning. Cut it in half and voila, you've got a cake now that matches with all the rest of the window dressing. 
by the way, those LCRD meetings were not public meetings. Those were subcommittee meetings. And I'm honestly very surprised. There's no record that LCRD members said, yeah, keep it under two and we're good. I, I would highly doubt that's the case. I was on that board and I'd be very, very surprised. Again, these large acre plus lots, that's what makes Levine unique. People come here, they come to this specific area for that and for the space. 1.74 is still 1.74. You get into that one or 1.1 range, we've got a great conversation here. I and my neighbors would like nothing better than to do that and to come back to this body to say, we support something that is truly compatible and that we can be proud of. Unfortunately, I feel like the applicant is just sort of checking the box and trying to take the path of least resistance here. And it's very, very unfortunate. If you go to the next slide, please, this is my last slide. As you can see, this is the area, it's, dr it's a drone aerial footage from Carver Foothills, south of Carver Foothills to South Mountain. And that area spans from 27th to 51st Avenues. People come to here for the low density one plus acre lots. Higher density plans like what the applicant is proposing, it will negatively in fact, it will negatively impact not only the existing residents, but the future residents. If the applicant was truly willing to work with us on density, they've had plenty of time since the neighborhood meeting on January 6th of this year. Sunrise Ranch could be, it really could be an addition to the area if they're willing to address <coughs> density, not just focus on the icing and the decorations, Let's focus on the substance of the cake. So with that, I respectfully request that this commission deny all three cases as filed and instead remand this applicant back to work with the community for a compatible zoning and plan that matches the current Levine area plan designation of zero to one DUA rural and open space. If you have any questions for me, I would really uh, be happy to answer them and I appreciate your time here today. Thank you. Thank you for your well-prepared presentation. Is there any um, questions at this time for Ms. Manning? All right, thank you. Thank you, so thank much. you very much. Um, we'll go ahead and ask uh, next person that's um, wished to speak is John Komodo. Welcome, Mr. Komodo. Um, we we'll try to keep these comments to three minutes is what we what we try to do. I don't usually enforce it super heavy, but um, any and and try to say things that are maybe different than what others have said, uh, unless you just really feel strongly to say it again. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commission members. I will strive to do that. My name is John Komodo. My address is three two one six. West Ansel Road, Levine 85339. My property is located approximately a third of a mile south of the Sunrise Ranch property. I've been a member of the community since 1977. It's way, way too much time, according to some of my neighbors, but, uh, but it's been a good long haul. And in that time, I've, I've been involved with at least three of the major uh, planning efforts in our area, the 1992 land use plan, the 1998 uh, Southwest Growth Study, and more recently in 2016, the revised uh, Phoenix land use plan. So uh, I've been at it for a while. <laughs> to be fair, the plan before you for consideration has many positive attributes, as, as you can see. Uh, some of the more striking ones that we would like to see retained as the project goes through the process is the serpentine layout, which is a welcome departure from your normal subdiv subdivision grid. The uh, unique uh, uh, situation where there's no lots that are back to back, uh, that affords a lot more privacy for those residents, creates value for those lots and affords access to the direct open space behind those lots. And last, of course, the provision of the 46% open space. That's very welcome addition for our area. Uh, and 
along with the usable outdoor amenities, it's a real plus because it creates a park-like setting in our community, and that's very desirable. If these attributes are integrated into a revised lower density and larger lot plan, that would be a real asset for the neighborhood as well as our Levine community. But this is where the rub comes, is that in context, this is a tremendous misfit with the Levine area plans and is totally out of sync with the existing adjacent R43 zoning found on the north, the east, and the south. We've got some tremendous potential for land use conflicts, especially with uh, rural, uh, urban, and uh, agricultural uses butting right up against a suburban, higher density, smaller lot community. So one of the primary goals of the Levine area plans was to focus on the preservation of our rural heritage, especially in the valley and the slopes uh, defined by Carver Mountain and Phoenix South Mountain Park. As a matter of fact, the city of Phoenix in their 1998 plan went so far as to create a special land use classification at zero to one uh, dwelling units per acre. This is a clear case for spot zoning. We've got a discordant mismatch land use butting up against rural properties. And that's not what, what we're trying to foster here. While a land use plan encouraged the mix of varying residential lot types and densities, it also emphasized uses uh, for density transition. So for instance, one of the uh, achievements of the, the former land use plans was to create a special density transition area for the R43 at no more than 35,000 square feet, and that would be the equivalent of your R135 lots. As the growth of Levine's tech sector and Commerce Park surges along the Loop 202 freeway, large executive lots are needed to balance off the overabundance of smaller lots existing in our area. And I'm ready to wrap this up now. This site can help accomplish this goal. Please deny the comprehensive plan amendment, the zoning case, and the uh, site plat as presented. We encourage the applicant to continue working for the compromise density that better preserves Levine's uh, best equivalent of paradise value. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your time, your well thought out presentation as well. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Schlosser here. I have a question for Mr. Komodo. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner Slosser. He has a question for you. We'll try to speak and try to speak up a little bit so we can hear you better. Luke. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm on my landline. John Komodo and I go back probably 25 years planning Levine together, and it's no joke. He spent literally thousands of hours in uh, planning this entire area. But I did have one question uh, that was brought up by. Ms. Manning, and the question for John is, are you still part of the LCRD after all these years? Which is yes, Levine uh, Citizens uh, for Responsible Development. Could, could you repeat that question just so we all can hear it? I'm asking Mr. Komodo if he's still part of the LCRD, the Levine Citizens for Responsible Development. Okay. Look, the answer is yes. I've, I've uh, consecrated my heart and soul to working with the LCRD, the Levine Village Planning Committee, and the Levine Planning Committees uh, for over the last 45 years. Yes, well, the premise for my question is she mentioned that, that uh, and I do not know this applicant at all, uh, but he brought up that the meeting with the LCRD that they were fine with densities and that on this project with anything under two dwelling units per acre. Were you involved in those meetings? It doesn't, 
normally when an applicant comes, they're not going to mess with the community or stir things up if that wasn't the case. And I would be shocked if that was the case. And I was just asking you what the feedback from the LCRD was with this applicant during those meetings about density. I, I was involved in some of the subcommittee meetings early on. Uh, that density may have been proposed by uh, some of the other members. Uh, but I also recall that, that no formal action was taken on that particular issue. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the, the case has only been discussed at a subcommittee level, but uh, the, the case was never brought before the full committee. What was the reason for that? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to defer that to the applicant. Uh, Luke, I'm not uh, sure why that uh, wasn't uh, followed through with the formal public action by, by the uh, Levine Planning Committee. No problem. Well, again, I just wanted to to uh, ask you that point because, I, like I said, I would be shocked if the applicant were to receive that feedback from the LCRD and then try to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. And so it sounds like they got possibly mixed messages. I don't know. Maybe the applicant can can uh, speak further to that after all of the speakers. That's all I had. Good. Good hearing your voice. I can't really see you, but uh, good hearing your voice after all these years. And yourself as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. Thank you, Vice Chair Slosser. Um, any other questions at this time for this speaker? Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we'll go ahead and call up um, Jordan Bennett, if he, would, if he is here and would like to speak. Is there a Jordan? This one, I might have found this one on the ground in the back there. I thought I dropped it, but it must be from somebody else, maybe. Or, um, yeah, and that would be Richard Bennett would be, I, there was two of them that were right here on the ground. I thought I dropped them, so I did not drop them. Oh, are they consent items? Okay, thank you. So I did have them. Um, I just missed them. But, uh, all right, are there any on the GoToWebinar that wish to speak? Okay, let's go there. Chairman Lindblom, uh, we had two registered, uh, pre-registered to speak, uh, John Knight and Dean Fairchild. Neither of them have appeared on the webinar, so I can't link them to you. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. And there are no others on the webinar who have indicated a desire to speak. Okay, thank you. And I, I did see in the emails and it might have been them as well, a couple asked that um, their time be given to Sid. So um, that might have been part of, part of the deal as well. All right, if there are uh, no other um, others that wish to speak, we'll go ahead and close the poll. Well, we'll go ahead and invite the applicant to come back up and. Um, maybe address some of the things that were discussed today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Let me start by addressing maybe the elephant in the room, which was raised by Commissioner uh, Schlosser, and which is um, our conversations with the LCRD, which we've met with the subcommittee twice. That is absolutely accurate, and I vow to you that happened. In those meetings, there was a handful of people um, one time we met at Burger King, another time we met at a pizza place, I'll forget the name of it now. We uh, had some food and some soda pop together as we talked about the plan. Lots of different voices happening, lots of different voices speaking, sharing ideas, shooting things at you. Um, I will avow to you that in that conversation, uh, conversations were had that said, look, we understand where you're at. Keep R118. Just keep your density less than two those conversations had. So with the utmost of respect for uh, Mr. John Komodo, who I have grown to like personally, and I am not refuting anything he has said, sharing with you uh, my recollection of those meetings where I was in personally, that's how it unfolded. As far as going to the full committee of the LCRD, I've, forgive me, I didn't think that was necessary in this instance because of our multiple conversations with them 
in person and over the telephone. For example, last week I was on the phone with Dan Pinton, who is also a member of the subcommittee. I've met with him twice and talked to him on the phone multiple times. And my conversation with Dan last week was this, Reese, I'm good. I don't, I don't have any other concerns. Let me talk with the rest of the group and I'll get back. And I haven't heard from him. And obviously today, whether or not they communicated, I don't know, but everyone has personal opinions to share. So that's the answer to uh, Mr. Schlosser's question to the board, but I vow to you that those subcommittee meetings did happen and those conversations were there. Please know we would never ever try to pull the wool or misrepresent anything we've ever done. Okay. Thank you. That, um, that answers that one. I, okay, yeah. I do, let me, sh let me share this, which is that um, I can show you pictures of the proposed homes if you'd like to see them. They're well done. There are uh, opportunity for RV garages on, on these lots. So when we talk about posted size lots or cramming something in, it's just simply not the case. Um, I, you, you heard, right, that people like the plan. They just wish the density was different. And so to me, we're really coming down to this overall concern about density. And I, I would just say to you, uh, please, uh, members of the commission, to think about in this area as we transition from the arterial road going in, this is a fair is a fair request and it's well thought out. We went back and we tried to do our best to map all these and, and I, we didn't get a full complete map. I've got one in the presentation, but let me just tell you where, where they came. So <clears throat> there were multiple individuals from the same household. So somewhere between 30 and 39 is what we, we count. But from zero to 300 feet, we, we were able to find zero people in opposition. From 300 to 1,000, there were two. From 1,000 feet to half mile, 10 people submitted things in opposition. From a half mile to one mile, four. Beyond one mile, four. And then there were 11 that didn't provide an address. So my, my conclusion that I draw from that is to say, yes, there are people that have legitimate concerns and we respect those opinions. But as far as negatively affecting anything that's happening in the area, the people that are right around us are not complaining. And so I would say to you, members of the commission, this is a good request. It's a fair request. It is consistent with what's happening in the overall area. We, and we've showed you those materials. We would urge your support on this, this plan. I'm happy to answer any more specific questions that anyone has. And I hope I've adequately answered uh, Commissioner Schlosser's question. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any uh, questions? Go ahead, uh, Vice Chair Slosher. I was just thanking the applicant. He answered my question. Thank you. And my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? The applicant. Uh, this is Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Anderson, and this is not entirely relevant, but just just to ask my curiosity uh, related to the LCRD. Um, there's been some discussion about a, a subcommittee. Uh, what what subcommittee is that? Is there like a zoning subcommittee part of the LCRD? Or? Um, I, I would invite Mr. Komodo to give you that answer, Commissioner Mitchell. Um, what I know is that as I reach out to the key leaders of the LCRD and I say, hey, let's let's chat, then they set it up and I I attend. So that's the I don't make that invite list, um, but I think this is a key subcommittee. Some of these and Mr. Komodo, I know and others really uh, have put their, like Commissioner Slosher said, they put their blood and sweat into this. They've lived there for a long time and we're happy to continue the conversations, respect their opinions. I think that you, we, at the end of the day, we just come down to a, a simple but respectful disagreement over density. Thank Understood, you. thank you for your answer. You. Any other questions at this time? Thank, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, would you like um, Mr. Mazzotto come, Komodo to come up and ask that question, answer that question, or, or did, were you satisfied with that? Uh, it was really just to satisfy my own curiosity. So if, if any of the other commissioners are interested, um, you know, Mr. Komodo, Mr. Komodo uh, can certainly come back up, but I don't think it's particularly necessary. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, having uh, heard that, and we'll go ahead and close public comment and open up this case for discussion amongst the commission. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner right. Slosser. Yeah, Vice Chair Slosser, go ahead. I'm just, this is not my district, but uh, 
thought I'd jump ahead of everybody here. This is normally the point where Commissioner Montoya, which is her district, usually defers to me to sort of give the rest of the commission the flavor for the area because that's the that's where I grew up is in Levine. And I've known Mr. Komodo that long. I can't remember if I don't know Miss Manny very well, but I know she's been active for lots of years. But I worked with uh, John Komodo. He mentioned the 1998 Southwest Growth Study, which they incorporated into the Phoenix General Plan. And way back then, if you can imagine, I've literally almost doubled in age since we worked on that together. Um, and the, the dividing line at the time, I know that the public hearings closed, but the sort of the taboo line was Dobbins Road, which is about a half mile north of this property. And where the densities south of Dobbins would be like, like uh, Mr. Komodo said, to preserve the heritage in the lower densities of the area. Um, but Levine's a whole different place than it was back in 1998. Where I grew up, it was farm fields for two miles in one direction and a mile in the other. And since then, things have obviously evolved, new retail, new subdivisions. I did look up on the assessor's website, of the, the applicant mentioned the densities. And I guess my first thought, I wanted to commend the applicant with their density 1.74. They probably could have proposed even more density than that and possibly been successful. But I, more importantly, I looked up not just densities, but lot sizes to put it into perspective. And in their application, they mentioned Whispering Hills, which is adjacent to the west. And I think the average lot size of this application is 70 foot wide lots. And the same holds true for the new subdivision on the west side. I think it's Marikay Homes that's building that. A quarter mile north of this application, and I think that zoning was in place way back when, those lots, that density has to be about eight to the acre, right at the corner of 35th and Dobbins, the southeast corner. Those lots are like 40 foot by 70 foot wide lots. And then the last one I'll mention is a quarter mile northeast south of the La Salvia Dairy. Those lots are, that's KB Home. Those lots are 45 by 120s, I think. So this area has evolved over time. There's definitely south of the mountain lower densities, one lot per acre or one unit per acre and, and greater. But as the applicant said, it's a good transition. Uh, with everything in the area and times change and and I think this density that's proposed is, is appropriate for the times and for the area and I'm in support of in favor of uh, this project. Sorry for rambling on. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, Vice Chair. Sasha, any other? Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Denzize. Thank you. I'm in this. I'm in this district, and I actually live in Levine. Um, I know the area very well. I just want to say first, you know, thank you to Sid and John for making such a great presentation. Um, you know, well thought out, and uh, really do appreciate you know um, input that's well thought out like that. And my my thought on this is is you know the 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 project is a really nice project, and <clears throat> You know, there's always going to be some people that don't like, you know, everything about it. But overall, this is a very, very nice project. And I look at, I look at it as, you know, how it fits the area and other places and how that, that's been developed like this. And I looked at Talisera on 19th Avenue. That that development has it has fit in really nice without really noticing. Um, you know a big difference in, in density um so i am supportive of this this case um i i think as we go forward and as as things get developed i've seen in levine 
that all, all what happens is the, the density gets worse and worse and worse or more or, or denser and denser and denser. So, um, you know, 1.74 on this piece, I think is, is, is it's a nice project and I, I, I'm in support of it. So um, I just wanted to let that be known. Thank you, Commissioner Dan Zeisen. To say. Uh, well, to I don't need to. Uh, somebody else. It sounds like Commissioner Swartz wants to talk more than yeah. you. So go ahead, Commissioner Swartz. Do you want me to go first? Yes, yes please go. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I first just want to point out a couple important things to me. Um, those were two incredible speakers who I think gave some not only accurate testimony, but I think some important things that I try to be a great listener um, because I think it's important to listen to neighborhoods. I never heard Mr. Anderson, when he gave his presentation, talk about being at a Burger King and someone may have said, as long as you keep it under two, we're fine. What he presented was that the LCRD said that as long as you keep it under two, we're fine. Those are two completely different things. And so when the speaker said she felt he was disingenuous, I'm going to agree with her. Um, I, I just can't imagine that he wouldn't have had an email or an affidavit that said that, that it came officially, officially from the LCRD. And I'll just tell you that I agree with the, the speakers that this should be continued for that reason. And I don't think that he met with the full committee and I've not heard a good reason why he did not. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Swart. Mr. Chairman, uh, all right, I'm going to go to. Uh, uh, okay, was that Commissioner Slosser? Yeah, I just want to respond back to Commissioner Swart real quick. I have a good guess on who he met with at Burger King because there's been 10,000 meetings held at that same Burger King at, at uh, on Broadway. Uh, there and and uh, I guess my thought is with the LCRD, if everybody was having served down there on the Levine Village for eight years, if the community was truly up in arms, we would have a hundred speakers, not not uh, two or three speakers. So um, I don't know. Like I said, I think wires may have been crossed there, but but. Uh, I guess that's my response to your concern. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair uh, Slosser. We're going to go to Commissioner Arnett, who has waited patiently. Oh, I want to find. Just my thoughts on this case. So, frankly, I don't care what happened at the Burger King because we're here as a zoning case today. But um, um, great presentations. Those are great presentations. And this is no different than where I grew up on the East Valley, right? Where you have all this open, expansive land. I currently live in what used to be that. And, and, and this is that battle with development with, with just the need for more housing. Um, and this is why we do planning and this is why staff is so good at what they do. And um, it, it's hard because the, the way to make everything not change is to acquire that land and never change it, right? But the, the property owners, as long as they don't infringe on other people's rights, one thing we can expect that 10 years from now, this area will look different. It will. It has for the last, you know, well, forever it has been. So, so I, I appreciate what the, the speaker said. I mean, they were great points. They were great presentations, and um, and I would I would actually agree with uh, with the second uh, speaker opposed that that that's what this looks like, right? You have to give something to uh, you know for this larger density. We have these buffers. I even wrote down that it's close to half of the land is going to remain wide open. You'll never get that with the current situation. Well, I guess you could if nobody ever, but you could do one acre lots legally. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm really in support of this, this, this uh, presentation because of all the things that were mentioned by the speakers, but also by what I've seen in this presentation. Um, my hot buttons are traffic. My hot buttons, does it really change the field? Will it be more dense? Of course it will. I don't know how to get over that hurdle and still have people have this area be what it has been and will be. Um, but I appreciate that that balance, if there is such a thing, 
Um, I know we'll all, do, uh, I agree with the first speakers that we will all have different opinions, right? We will all have different opinions. Uh, but I appreciate the applicant working with, um, with staff the best they can to create a feel, even though yes, within that buffer, it'll be much more dense, but it'll feel like an open area, even though it won't be. Uh, so I guess with, with all that, I guess I would be in support of the project. Yeah, I'd just like to make um, a couple comments. One, in five years of being on this uh, commission, these were probably the two best um, presentations by opposition that I've heard in preparation and also commitment and, um, and uh, in content and um, respectful of time. So uh, growing up in Gilbert that once looked like Levine and does not look like anything like Levine anymore, um, this, this body has heard me speak to that. Um, I'm very sensitive to uh, what projects will do to the nature and and um, the feel of the community. And that was what I was listening to today. And that was what I um, thought of as I listened to the presentation by the applicant. And as I pondered what happened to my hometown um, and the densities that are just, uh, I don't know, we had a, I guess, a uh, everyone decided to see how many houses they could pack into a small area. And um, I don't feel that here, but I'm very sensitive to the comments and um, and that were made today. And so um, I just wanted to voice those few things without really showing my cards, but um, thank you to those that were here today. I really appreciate it, All, both the applicant and those that spoke. Any other comments? Um, Chairman Lindblom, I, this is David. I passed along a note from Dan Penton. Um, I, I think clarified a question that was asked uh, in the chat. He, um, apparently he's on the LCRD. He, he said they met with the applicant and supported the 1.74 and R118. Um, we didn't realize he was planning to speak until you had already closed the public. So I apologize. All right, um, thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, any other comments? I'll entertain a motion. Uh, these have to be dealt as three separate motions just for the commission to understand. Each case will be a separate motion with a separate roll call. So um, we will deal with, just for simplicity purposes, it would be CPA 2021-012 would be the first uh, motion for approval, denial, or continuance. Uh, I'll make a motion to support uh, for approval of CPA 202-1012. All right, we have a... Um, a motion by Commissioner Dan Zeisen to approve CPA 2021-012. Do we have a second? Commissioner Schlosser, second. All right, we have a second by Vice Chair Schlosser. Um, we'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. Commissioner Lawrence. Approve. Commissioner McGee. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Commissioner Swart. Yes. Commissioner Arnett. Yes. Commissioner Hernandez. Yes. Commissioner Dan Zeisen. Yes. Vice Chair Slasher. Yes. Chairman Lindblom. Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of nine to zero. All right, we have approval of CPA 2021-012 by a 9-0 vote. We'll move on to Z 2021-074, if someone would like to make a motion on that. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Dan Zeisen. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Lawrence. Thank you, Commissioner Lawrence. We have a second by Commissioner Lawrence. Let's go ahead and do a roll call, roll call vote. Commissioner Lawrence? Yes. 
Commissioner McGee? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Swart? Yes. Commissioner Arnett? Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Dan Zeisen? Yes. Vice Chair Slasher? Yeah. Chairman Limblom? Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of nine to zero. Thank you, Rosalie. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to S2021-20. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Dan Zeisen, with, with a motion to approve S2021-20. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner All right. McGee. All right, Commissioner McGee. Uh, We'll have a second by Commissioner McGee. Um, roll call vote, Ros Rosalie, please. Commissioner Lawrence. Yes. Commissioner McGee. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Commissioner Swart. Yes. Commissioner Arnett. Yes. Commissioner Hernandez. Yes. Commissioner Dan Zeisen. Yes. Vice Chair Slasher? Yeah. yeah. Chairman Lindblom? Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of nine to zero. Thank you, Rosalie. And um, thank you to the applicant and to those from the community that came today. Um, yeah, keep keep fighting for your community. It's awesome to see that kind of um, passion and support from those in, in the community. Um, is there any uh, additional items by staff to present this time? No, sir. All right. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.